Welcome back to Broadside. I'm Steve Avison. The jury will hear closing arguments tomorrow in the trial of Aaron Hernandez in the murder of Odin Lloyd. Today, three final witnesses testified, the only ones called by Hernandez's defense team. They raised questions about PCP-induced violence, also the DNA found on some bubble gum and bullet casings. NECN's John Roney has more. It's one of the few pieces of physical evidence against Aaron Hernandez, a discarded piece of gum with his DNA that came in contact with a shell casing. An expert for the defense told jurors that the defendant's DNA could have been easily transferred between the two items. There's going to be a lot of saliva that's present on that, so there's going to be a lot of DNA. Um, it's also an adhesive type material. Um, obviously, it appears adhered to this casing. The former New England Patriot is accused of killing Odin Lloyd in 2013 and dumping his body in an industrial park near his North Attleboro home. Hernandez associates Ernest Wallace and Carlos Ortiz have been charged with murder as well. Is it likely, doctor? Dr. David Greenblatt testified on the effects of PCP for the defense, which is suggesting that Lloyd was killed by Wallace and Ortiz after they had smoked the drug. The prosecution attacked Dr. Greenblatt's credentials and showed him video of the defendant, Ortiz, and Wallace arriving back at the home of Hernandez after Lloyd's death asking him if he could tell if they were on PCP at the time. Three minutes after the murder, you'd expect to see something lingering if PCP psychosis or PCP intoxication was related to the murder. No, Actually, you would not. No, not necessarily. It might, but you just can't tell. The judge did tell the jurors that all of the evidence in this case is now in and they should expect to hear closing arguments tomorrow. In Fall River, Massachusetts, John Maroney, NECN. Welcome back to NECN. This is Michael Coyne. He is the dean of the Massachusetts School of Law and our legal analyst here at NECN. So there you have it. Tomorrow, the prosecution already suggesting that their, their closing statements, may, the closing arguments may take 90 minutes. The defense, 45 minutes, considerably shorter. They're confident that the case has not been proven, is my sense. Uh, well, they are. And what they want to stress here is that there is, in fact, reasonable doubt that the uh, government has been has failed to to make their proof as they should have and uh, they are very confident it appears they've only called three witnesses they have a um, a defense now that is set up that uh, we could call it OJ 2.0 is that the government has uh, not been able to prove guilt beyond all reasonable doubt talk about the, the first witness who was an expert on PCP because the defense came back with their own counter witness today which was kind of interesting but they, they're I guess implying that the other two guys the associates of Aaron Hernandez they were just out of their minds on PCP and they did something he had nothing to do with. yeah well, it's an interesting defense uh, but the the expert was a very solid expert from Boston Medical Center had a uh, done it extensive investigation and research into it had been widely published and has uh, sufficient significant evidence that suggests that PCP angel dust can cause psychosis and can in fact lead to violent outbursts like this the interesting part of the defense is that it still is the three of them present at the time of the murder and so even if the other two are on angel dust unless it's a sudden violent outburst that they didn't get together and plan the murder, then under our aiding and abetting statute, he's still going to be found uh, guilty of murder. We haven't heard much from or about Ernest Wallace or Carlos Ortiz, but those are the two people that you're referring to right there. So the defense comes up and they have this, this counter witness on there trying to kind of undermine this whole notion that these were kind of two out of control friends. Yeah, well, there's a couple different points with respect to that. First, he says that there really is no data that suggests that uh, angel dust causes a psychosis that would create this violent outburst. Other people who are already predisposed to violence are going to be predisposed to violence and commit it anyway. And what he's suggesting is the data just doesn't support what the defendant's expert is suggesting. All right, Michael, final statement. Circumstantial evidence only. There's no murder weapon. There's no witness to the crime who's spoken or come forward. There's a little bit of video. There's a lot of uh, behavior that they're pointing to. What does the prosecution have to conclude with tomorrow in their closing argument? What does the uh, defense have to do? Um, the defense has to continue to play the reasonable doubt card, that the government has failed in its essential proof and that the defendant has a presumption of innocence that the government simply has not overcome. The government is going to have to swing for the fences tomorrow, in my opinion, because I am worried that on a largely circumstantial case that the jury is seeing some cracks in the armor and is seeing some doubt. So what they're going to have to do is 
give a very, very powerful and persuasive closing in their 90 minutes and really, really convince the jury that all the loose ends are tied up and that there isn't reasonable doubt. It's a, it's a tough case for the government at this point, some of which is because of their own making, um, but, but does he have a chance? Yes, he does. Asking the jury to play along with the mystery. It took nine weeks to make the case. Tomorrow, closing arguments will be there. Thanks so much, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve.